There we go. So we are recording there. And looks like we are awesome. Live on Facebook, Twitter, and the Trade Room. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to get some energy for this one because uh, <laughs> yesterday I gave you guys a real uh, in-depth webinar. Uh, and if you guys know me by now, I barely get gasps of, or gusts or gasps of air when I give them because I try to give you as much possible uh, when I'm doing these videos. Uh, so this video is going to be kind of a continuation or it's a different uh, kind of kind of a part of a series that I'm going to do for you guys of just really important information when you're getting started with trading. Uh, and uh, if you want to take a look at the video I did yesterday, um, I did one for you guys. It's on YouTube at Bullish Bears. Just type in Bullish Bears on YouTube. And you'll find this one I did yesterday on how to trade bull flags and bear flags using the 9 EMA. Now that's a really, uh, this is a strategy video that's just incredibly, it's an awesome strategy to use. Now, again, I wanna give you a caveat. Moving average lines, they're lagging, lagging indicators and do not rely totally upon them. And before you even start trading, like I was saying to you guys uh, yesterday, candlesticks are the most important indicator to use when trading. So with that being said, you know, again, don't use anything like moving average lines or anything else unless you know candlesticks, right? Because everything can become a distraction. So today, what I wanna show you guys is how to draw trend lines and how to draw support and resistance levels. Now, it's uh, guys, I can't stress the importance of knowing, again, candlesticks, and then support and resistance. Support and resistance is absolutely everything when it comes to trading. It's price action, right? So you're going to see right here, here's a chart of the SPY. It tracks the overall market. And you'll see, I'm not going to go really into candlesticks and patterns. Again, on our website, just a quick plug over here. If you want to learn more about trading, we have thousands of dollars worth of free courses here. We also have right here a candlesticks ebook and wallpaper backgrounds over here, which will really get you set up with learning trading and candlestick patterns, right? So let's take a let's talk about the basics for a second. Every time somebody on the planet buys or sells a stock, I can't stress it enough, it shows on the charts. Right. It may sound, oh, for some of you guys that are listening, oh, yeah, that makes common sense. Right. Well, it's not so common because especially with trading, you got to ask yourself, why do over 90 percent of traders fail? That's a statistical fact. Over 90 percent of traders fail. They do not make it as a trader. Now, I'd, I'd argue there's one of two major causes. Either one, they let their emotions get the best of them or two, they don't know the technicals or three, it's a combination of both, right? So again, anytime a fundamental trader or a technical trader makes a trade in any security on the planet, it doesn't matter whether that person's worth $10 or whether they're worth 10 billion, it shows on the charts. The importance of that is that these patterns all show very, very important clues when trading. This is where it gives you a chance or a visual to buy low, sell high if you're going long, or sell high and buy low when you're going to short, right? So that's all depending on what your trading strategy is. Now, this is where... You'll hear me going on rants, and I went on my on a rant at the end of the one yesterday that I did because this is so important because especially if you're new getting to trading or if you want to understand things like, again, you'll see I'm making this video in the middle of the coronavirus, right? So you see this huge drop happened here, and there'll be, you know, there's like that whole adage in the industry, right? Oh, traders, it's all a bunch of hocus pocus. You can't predict when the market's gonna go up or when it's gonna go down. You'll hear many people say it's a rigged game. Guys, it doesn't matter. Rigged or not rigged, you can still profit and also protect yourself 
in quote unquote rigged markets, right? So whether I believe or someone believes that the market's rigged or not, it doesn't matter. This is a game, if you wanna call it, or a strategy where you can profit off of the rigging and you could also protect yourself off of the rigging due to the candlestick patterns that show on the charts. So that being said, I'm not gonna go in depth on all the different patterns. We're gonna talk basically just about uh, support resistance levels and uh, trend lines, right? So let's go back here on the SPY and let's go back to, actually, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit here. So I try to keep it simple and I say, when you're doing, let's say, horizontal support and resistance, right? There's vertical doing trend lines and then there's horizontal levels, right? I like to say connect as many peaks in as many valleys as possible. You can call peaks resistance levels. You can call valleys support levels. So I try to give like a, almost like a simple visual where, you know, connect as many peaks in as many valleys as possible. Same thing with trend lines, but which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, but let's go back and see, you know, back over back in 1993, right? Let's find some peaks in some valleys, right? Now there could be several of them. Again, I don't wanna to go too crazy, but let's just, let's just look at the visuals, right? Here's a couple peaks right here. Let's put a line there, right? And you see how I extend my line out to the future? Because what happens in the past also can reflect in the future, right? Doesn't mean price will go up or down to those levels, but that's why it's nice to have these you know, lines because they go in the future because it maps out support and resistance levels. So that's a resistance level right here. You can see those two equal peaks went to the future and look, one, two, three, four months came close, but it did not break these two peaks. You notice that, right? Now let's find some valleys. Right here, you can see there's some valleys right over in here right here and look they extend to the future so when price went up and this month couldn't break this month what did it do it came down and it retested this support this valley which is support buy low sell high if you're going long sell high buy low if you're going short right buy the valleys or support levels sell the uh, resistance levels, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? But new traders many times, they buy the news and then it all falls back down to support. Buy low, sell high, right? <clears throat> so there's a channel, right? There's a horizontal channel. Now, uh, again, there's a really nice vertical channel, but I'm not gonna get into vertical yet. So now you'll see kind of price goes up, goes down in this channel up and then down and then look, now it's it's moving up. This is resistance and now here you go. It finally goes and it breaks these previous, previous two peaks. So now resistance is broken, now it becomes support. So many a times you'll see this over and over and over all day long on every security on the planet, whether it's and any chart, when stocks break out of resistance, sometimes they'll just rip, or many a times they'll go up and they'll come back down and retest. If the retest doesn't hold support, then it fails. If it fails, this becomes resistance again, right? Support and resistance. When resistance it bro is broken, or price breaks above resistance, it then becomes support, right? If it fails support, then it's got the, it's hitting resistance again, right? So as you see, price didn't retest any of this and it hasn't and let's all pray that we never retest that. That would be horrific, right? So then you can kind of go back up again. You can see this is, and we'll get into trend lines in a little bit, but then you'll see right here, see some multiple peaks again right in here and you'll see, it's not perfect, but you'll see a couple valleys right here but again, remember guys, there'll be fake outs along the way, right? So you'll see here's some support and you can see some resistance. Price hit resistance, it came down to retest, but look, it held support, it didn't fail it. And then it goes up back up, it went back up 
and again this is basically like an ascending triangle but we won't get into patterns and you'll see price goes and it breaks out again right so you can see there's kind of a horizontal channel right then you go back up here again and you can see there's two peaks up there i'm just showing you guys what i'm showing you right now is a monthly chart this can be done on any time frame if you want to consider this a one minute chart a five minute chart an hourly chart again it'll look a lot differently the better you know this is the spy the more the larger the security um the better these patterns look you know if it's a penny stock which i'll show you afterwards a lot more volatility you'll see a huge difference actually let's take a look at one really quick uh give you an example of a penny stock i'm going to chart this one after so i haven't even looked at this daily chart i just looked uh that it had a breakout today so let's just take a look at ags so that's a monthly chart let's look at the daily of it you know it's just you'll see penny stocks like this they're just over and over and over they just they're crappy looking charts you know let's look at the other one i was going to look at ainv uh, this one's actually kind of trading sideways but a prototypical one let's look at dries oh, okay that's a cra <laughs> crappy looking one we'll get into uh guys give me a uh oh you know acb perfect example here's one right here this is a canadian pot stock you know pumped up guy oh man this is where i get in the rumor again <laughs> or get in the uh, in my rant again buy the rumor sell the news right you buy the rumor at support levels i, I don't want to even want to show this but my whole point being is most new traders buy the news here's where the news hits oh legalization in canada why did the stock why did it just dump because you bought the news you didn't buy the rumor on the way up you didn't buy low and sell high again you don't just buy random down here you have to understand the patterns but actually while we're looking at this chart let's just do this look at this guys perfect example see this peak this is all-time highs it extends to the future perfect example what did it do a little fake out and then it failed i actually am glad i'm pulling this one up because this will actually just coincide with what i'm talking about double top pattern it failed top top this top couldn't break this top it failed all right so you can say oh that's great that's with a penny stock you can never predict the markets that way right well okay let's get into it and let's talk let's keep talking about spy right let's go back to the monthly chart and you'll see guys now see these is that right yeah perfect all right so look at this here we go as we're going horizontally let's go back here right over here so you guys see now as we're starting to go up right over here and we're moving on up you guys notice over here where was that 1997 look at all the way over in i don't even know what that is oh two you guys notice that like price came back down and started retesting it down over here right i'm just going to show you guys again horizontal support and resistance levels right here so you can see some peaks you can see some consolidation some valleys here look price again many times it breaks out comes back down and retests it right so sometimes you'll see again you'll have breakouts over here and then you know you just keep you guys see i'm just connecting peaks and valleys and there's these zones right goes up comes back down holds support comes back look it retests up here you know it couldn't break a little bit and then it finally goes and breaks out and what did it do kind of comes down towards these areas again it held and then you can see i can just keep going up and up and up right so now again as i go further right price goes up and then what does it do it makes all-time highs right back over here at 155 dollars what does it do it comes back down and starts retesting so it hits resistance and comes back down and starts retesting support levels right support and resistance this is everything when it comes to trading right I, I can't stress enough it, this is this is how the market works and how all basically stocks and securities work you find these horizontal channels and obviously trend lines which i'm going to show you in a bit but you see how these zone levels 
they go out to the future. If we go over here, look at right over here. So now this is back in 2000. Here we go. Remember that chart I just showed you guys a few minutes ago. Now going over to basically 2000, you know, seven area, 2008, right? What did it do? This peak, do you guys notice that this peak right here, that line is all the way back over to all time highs. This is so important. Please pay attention to this if you're new. This all time high goes all the way out to the future you touched it right here and it failed. That's a double top. That's a major warning sign, right? Of a possible reversal. It fell back down and it went back up. So it saved, which was nice. It didn't fall back down here. And then boom, moved up a little bit and it failed again. So now you had a double top, but you also have a double top failure right here. If a double top is if a peak can't break a previous, previous peak, that's a potent, that's a big warning sign of a reversal down. And if you see that in a market at all time highs, that's a big warning sign, right? So, and as you see, what did it do? Boom, failed support, failed, let's do this. Failed support, failed support, fail, 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 fail. And it went back down here. So back in, where is that, 2008, all the way it goes it went back and touched levels from back in 2002 which is all the way back from i think back over here you guys see that you guys tracking me so far in the trade room before i go further anybody have uh questions so far i know i said don't ask questions i just want to see if this is tracking so far before i get into trend lines Okay, awesome. So now let me reset the chart. I'm gonna re get rid of the drawings there and let's go back again to 2000 or the dot-com bubble, put that line here. Now we don't have to look at all those other ones and we go back over here and see that happens. So now this is what I try to say is, People back in the 2008 financial crisis and leading up to it, you can't tell me that people, some people, many people, certain people didn't see it coming. That's a lie. There are people that knew and saw it coming, just like many people saw what happened to our market now with the coronavirus. Not saying they knew the coronavirus is happening. I sure hope nobody saw that part coming to the market. But there were people that have profited, you know, rich people off of it dropping. So hopefully it was just luck and not that they knew it was coming. But it happened now in 2000, where are we? Where are we? 2020. So 2000 happened. Let's call it a fluke, right? They didn't know the dot-com bubble, right? So they didn't know the dot-com bob, the dot -com bubble happened, right? Let's say nobody knew that happened. You would think eight years later they should be prepared of, hey, the dot-com bubble happened. Let's prepare so that doesn't happen again to people. But then guess what happens? The 2008 you know, financial crisis, right? So that's all happening right down in here. But you mean to tell me there wasn't people that didn't know up here? Who are the people? How, who knows what's going on there? So these are the same people, probably many of them, that are managing your 401k, right? Some of you may have gotten trapped either in the dot-com or in the 2008 financial crisis, or now you can say, okay, first time, bad luck. Second time, hey, guy, sorry, guys, it happened again. Oops, we didn't see it coming, right? Third time, come on, guys. Third time's a charm. You mean to tell me that you didn't know, you these people that manage these huge funds, you don't know what a candlestick chart is? You don't know how to map out support and resistance levels? And this is where it really upsets me because this is where when you zoom out, many people get burnt by this. Uh, let me just do this. 
There are many people right here. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you trend lines, guys. I'm giving the ramp, but I need to give you like, invest some emotions into this. How many of you are getting destroyed by this right now in your, in your 401ks, right? And how many people back over here, right over here? Perfect, so now we zoomed out. All right, you guys zoom out and I put this line back over here. <clears throat> Actually, oh, that's 2000. Oh, here is the weekly chart, perfect. I wanna go to 2000. There we go, that's much better. Okay, cool. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's get rid of this one. Perfect. You guys catch the visual. Double top. So people got burned here. They got burned here a second time. And now they just got burned out here. You can read these patterns. Remember, I was just showing you guys. Just kind of just, just keep it simple, right? Here's a peak, all-time highs, all-time highs. Where are all-time highs now? Right up here. Just put a line up there, right? Where are all-time lows? Down here. Here's a, you know, a support level down over in here, right? So here's some consolidation. You know, put a line right here, right? Then we can go, here's a peak right over here. Goes across to the future. Right, I can connect some support down in here. I can connect some, look right out over in here, right over there, connects out over here. And you guys see, I could just keep going up and up and up. Right over here, here's some support, connect down here. Here's some resistance, there's the channel over here. Right, so kind of price will trade in channels, right? It'll trade sideways in channels, and then it'll either break down Right, so break down, break down, or break out, right? <clears throat> so now I bring your attention to this. So just while we're staying on horizontal support and resistance levels, all time highs. So now this is where, again, where we talk about stock market will go and it'll go back up again, don't worry. Again, guys, I believe it will but it's a matter of when. Remember, let's go back to 2000. When did it go back to that level again? Back in 2006 or seven, right over here, six, seven years later, before it failed. So yeah, you can accumulate and start growing some wealth back up again, but you didn't have to take this loss if you were, you know, if you were managing your own 401k or had an advisor that knew a stock chart. Again, my whole point being, guys, I say it over and over again. I might coin it, but <laughs> I want to get it in your head uh, that especially if you're new uh, to trading or investing, if your financial advisor cannot read this chart, fire them and find a new one immediately. You should not have a financial advisor managing your wealth at retirement that doesn't understand this chart. Like pure and simple. I'm gonna not I'm not gonna go much further into that, but there's reasons for it because again, if you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year managing people's wealth and you can't read this chart, which tells you and gives you clues and warnings ahead of time. This is where people get destroyed and they get hurt. Now, let's go over here. Lots of this crazy volatility right now. Now we can talk about when's the stock market gonna go back up again. Personally, I don't know. That's why I watch the charts. I watch candlesticks, I watch these zones. And then what I wanna show you here is you can see kind of a channel. Let's just do right over in here too. You know, here's some consolidation kind of in these areas, right? It's going up in a range, up and down. You guys see, right? Goes up, comes back down, goes up, comes down, goes up, breaks out a little bit, comes back, retest it, and comes back down. You guys see, price goes up, hits resistance, consolidates, breaks out, comes back down, retest support, fails, goes back to another support level. Now it's either gonna go back up. If it goes up, it's gotta hit this resistance. It may shake and go down and go sideways, right? So this is where we're gonna look at the patterns, right? I don't know what's gonna happen next week or next month or next year. So this is where, oh, this is what I wanted to do. 
let me just do this real quick. I want to do, okay, this does have the bar. So, right. okay, cool. It does have it. Um, so now I want to draw your attention to this guys again, before I go into trend lines is when price goes back up again, remember, I, I just want to draw a big like yellow line, you know, bubble right here. When it goes back up again, you need absolutely want it has it's critical that price will hold above this level and continue up if not be very very this is now again if you guys got burnt by this don't get burnt potentially by this i again i hope it goes up and continues to go up forever but i'm going to look for things like you see that red spinning top or red shooting star candle or these dojis or stuff like that if price goes back to all-time highs again and you start seeing those candles on a monthly chart, again, you can go to weekly or daily. If you start seeing that, that's a warning. And I say, again, that's where maybe you're not risky. You know, This is where if you're risky in a 401k or in your long term, this is where now you can get destroyed. If you're safe up here, then when it drops, depending on what funds you're in, it's a lot less of a drop, all right? So if it moves back up again and it fails this area, look, see these levels? These Now, again, we never want to see it go back down to these levels again. But let's just remove these and go down. Again, you'll see on my chart, I don't even have showing you guys right now the moving average lines. So this is where, guys, price action is key. Ideally, you want to know how price action works without moving average lines. And then when you can understand price action and these channels, then you could have things like on a separate chart, you'll see kind of what I have when I just uh, minimize. You'll see I have kind of, you can have a multi-chart set up. You'll see I have them kind of with my moving average lines and VWAP and all of this stuff. So I can kind of get a visual. I can change the time frames of things I'm looking at. And then, you know, trade off of a clean chart. So it's, again, everybody's trading style is different. If you like the moving average lines, great. If not, you can have a clean chart, have another screen up with the moving average lines. I just don't want you to completely rely on moving average lines because they could also be a distraction, right? So just go back down again, just show you these visuals right here, support, support. And so there you go. So now you have these kind of these horizontal support and resistance levels. And you'll see again, as price goes up, comes back down, many times it holds above. It doesn't, remember, it's not gonna, doesn't always mean just because you see support, oh, price has to go there, not necessarily. And just because it goes up, it doesn't mean it's gonna go and go back up. It's these levels, right? So it goes down, goes up, comes down, goes up. And then, you know, what's resistance? If it breaks out, you'll see right here. You see as it's starting to break out, it's retesting, retesting, retesting. It's testing support. Think of resistance as a ceiling. Think of support as a floor, right? If price can't get a gut above the ceiling, it's hitting the ceiling. It's not coming down. If it breaks above, then that ceiling becomes the floor. You want to see price hold the floor, right? So support, resistance or buy low, sell high. So this is where you guys starting to see now that it's not so hocus pocus how the stock market works. It's not so much of a guess. It's not a chance. It's not gambling. It becomes gambling if you don't know patterns, support, and resistance levels. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's only gambling if you don't know what you're doing. Now, candlestick patterns and support and resistance levels are not foolproof. You'll see many times right here, it comes down and it just tanks, right? Uh, so it doesn't mean it's just, oh, hey, you know, when it fails support, we'll get some small candlesticks. No, not necessarily. That's why you got to have warnings, you know, be aware of the warning signs and manage your risk. So I just want you to get a good visual on this. Pay close attention before I go to trend lines. To this area up in here or in here we i hope i just don't want to assume that it's going to go back up here this might take years it may take months i don't know we'll see what trump does but just be aware if price breaks this ceiling level here and it starts getting up in here and trades around all you have to pay attention to is 
can price get above this level and hold if not and you see these warning candles of those reversals be careful because if it rejects up here then it can come back down to here or here or here or here or keep going down <clears throat> make sense guys all right so that is for spy let's go back to just give you another a little bit more on kind of a penny stock Look at that monthly of Aurora cannabis, the cannabis ACB was a quote unquote darling of pot stocks of Canada. I think was the second largest one or most popular compared to canopy growth at the time. And what did it do right here? Get the visual guys Buy the rumor. Sell the news Buy low sell high buy low sell high buy the rumor sell the news do not buy the news do not buy the news small candlesticks near support levels when it gets crazy you take your profit consider getting out and you'll see again this is very uh it doesn't even really have many horizontal support and resistance levels on a monthly but that's where you can go to weekly you know it doesn't even really have much there um, but you'll see the volatility on penny stocks. You'll see charts like this all the time with penny stocks. That's basically what penny stocks look like, right? All right, so now let's zoom into it. Actually, let's take a look at a five minute. Let's go to SPY intraday. That's daily or that's long term. Now, here's what you can do intraday do the same thing I just showed you. And you can find the zones intraday on a five minute or a one minute, right? Connect some peaks, connect some valleys, right? So you can look back over here. You can see here's a valley. These valleys kind of go out to here. You can see some peak. I mean, there's a lot that you can put on your chart. You got to be careful. Sometimes you can put too many and it gets too much. These peaks, right? They go out here. You know, again, there's so many you can do, but like right connecting these peaks and it just keeps going up right here's a couple there's so many of them right here so connecting out here so what's happening back here affects out to the future many times connecting these peaks they go out and just keeps going up you know find some up here and then up over in here right so you're finding these channels pre-market highs very important map this stuff out you know some here's some lows in the pre-market lows the grays are pre-market the whites are uh during the market right so you'll have these channels i don't you know again you might not want to have all these on here depending on your style i just want to show you what it looks like on an intraday format so if you're using a five minute setup you can do it to hourly as well so you can zoom out to hourly now on hourly you could say whoa that's too many of them so maybe if you're doing hourly you redo the chart and you say, you know, let's connect the lines down here, connect them right over in here, some out in this level right in here. And it just keeps going. I mean, you guys can see, right? There's so many of them. But this is, guys, you can say, oh, that's too much to look at. Remember, everybody's trading style is different, right? You might not have an, as many of these lines depending, you know, if you're going more longer term or swing trading day trading you might have more of the level set up you might do what like i just showed you on a five minute chart have more of them um you know on your chart on a five minute setup if you're doing more day trading if you go to a one minute chart right so maybe you're if you're doing just one minute scalps you know maybe you don't care as many about you know about as many of them so maybe you're just mapping out pre-market highs in here going in here and then you'll see price goes and breaks out. And then you're kind of just, you know, mapping out. Here's a high. Here's a high. What did it do? It pulls back, goes up, comes back down, back to these levels. You guys see that? Price goes up, down, up, down, up, down. All I do is win. <laughs> so you guys see here just channels, right? You know, and then it goes over here. Here's a high. Here's a high. And it just goes... And so when you're day trading, you see this stuff right now. Okay, you got a low down here. So now it goes up, comes back down, retest, goes up, 
can't hold, comes back down, up, down, up, down. And it's these channels, these sideways channels. So that's just kind of, again, a basics on horizontal support and resistance. I know I keep going over it. I didn't get the trend lines yet, but again, I'm always about repetition is the key. So guys, are you guys ready for trend lines yet? Does this make sense? All right, perfect. All right, so now let's clear and let's do trend lines. This same thing goes for, let's actually just pull up ACB. Let's see what the heck, I wanna give you guys a look with penny stocks, right? So penny stocks right here. So you can see there was uh, you know, some pre-market resistance there, right over in here. There was some support down in here, some support right over in here. And what did it do at open? It fell, it bounced, off previous day's high, went back up, and then what did it do? It broke pre-market high, went up, created a high here, came back, retested pre-market high, failed a little bit, went back up, retested, broke out, created a new, a new high. Breaks out, comes back down, retests, goes back up to resistance, comes back down to support. Fails support, fails support, fails support, gets a bounce, goes back up. And these are the channels, guys. So what I just showed you on SPY, now it's with a penny stock, right? The same thing is over and over and over again. It's just a lot more volatile with a penny stock. All right, let me get some energy here because uh, <laughs> I stare at this. I try to give so much in it and it takes out my energy. But now I really want to get into trend lines for you guys. <clears throat> so if my if I look tired making this video, it's because I put all my energy into it. <laughs> all right, trend lines. Now, instead of doing horizontal support and resistance, we're going to go angular. We're going to go on an angular, right? The trend is your friend when trading. Ride the trend up, ride the trend down. If you're bullish or you're along, you're going bullish, you're riding the trend up. If you're bearish, you're riding the trend down. Now here's where I wanna to try to uh, tell you guys where people will say, all right, you would have never seen it coming. I showed you guys before, right? I showed you, again, this is a candlestick pattern called the shooting star. That's a warning that the market's gonna come down. I showed you horizontal support and resistance levels, right? Now let's show you angular where you can say, ah, well, was the trend broken? Was the trend breaking? to give you a warning sign to get potentially out. Remember, connect as many peaks and valleys. Now we're gonna connect them sloping, right? We're gonna go sloping down, not horizontal across. So let's connect, uh, again, we use, there's a tool we really like to use called Trend Spider, which is really good, but you still need to be able to draw uh, trend lines yourself. Um, I wanna show you, we're gonna show you with Corona or this year first, and we'll go from there. See how you can connect this peak and this peak right over in here? Or or you can go right over here. This is where you gotta look and see guys, right? Connect as many peaks and valleys as possible. So you can say this peak connects with this these peaks over in here. It goes out in here, or you can go, you know, sometimes you'll have many several of them on your chart, right? So you can connect these, see this peak, goes back to this peak, to this peak right up in there right? Now, remember, just because we're way back here, well, let's also go, you know, sooner, right? We can go into sooner and we can go, this peak right here connects up in here, up over here, or you could have even said right in here, right? So this peak now connects with this green candlestick right here. And look, guys, you guys notice, remember, this is angular resistance, this is still a ceiling. You see how price is now, it's, it's having a tough time holding this resistance. It's not holding support. So is the trend potentially starting to break? Now that's resistance, let's go to support, right? We can do this right over here. You see this support level connected, remember, connect as many peaks and valleys as possible, 
Same thing with horizontal and re uh, angular or trend lines. Connect this valley, this valley, this valley. Look at what happened back in 2008. Look at guys, 2020. You mean to tell me this is hocus pocus? You can't figure this stuff out? You don't know? It's guys, it's all on the charts, right? Again, there's more trend lines you can do too. I mean, you can do like connect with, it all depends where you're at. I mean, hindsight's 2020, right? So you can see these are going out right out to the future. But this is telling you right here, it's it's warning you, you know? So you can see right here, this is going in an up channel. So higher lows are being formed, higher highs are being formed. And now it's at the top, right? Buy low, sell high. Doesn't mean sell your 401k high, but people take profits out here, guys, right? You guys seeing how it's hitting it's hitting a ceiling. That red candlestick, that's again, a shooting star at all time reason. Look at all these trend lines kind of converging in. And it's like right here, it's just a big warning sign. And what did it do? Is it a surprise that people started buying here? No, it's not a surprise. You know what I mean? But we don't know, like, you know, you don't know this is happening until it's happening, but it's buy, you know, buy at support right? Here's support, major support on a monthly. This is great. If you're bullish, we like to see that because we want to see the market go up. So you buy low and then you sell high. But when people are thinking, remember going back here, guys, the news was the economy is great. Stock markets at all time highs. That's the news. Great news. Marijuana stocks got legalized, right? Bitcoin news. Why does Bitcoin drop after the news comes out? Why does pot stocks drop after the news comes out? Why does the market many times drop after the new great news comes out? Because it's buy the rumor, sell the news. Buy low, sell high. Now, we didn't know the coronavirus, us, we didn't know that it was going to come down that way. But I'm sure some people knew and saw that coming. And this is where many rich people maybe profit. Because remember, guys, think about it. You don't have to have a lot of money. You can make money when the stock market goes up and when the stock market goes down, right? So you and I can make money that way. And the same thing with multi-billionaires. They can make money as the stock market goes up. They can also make money as the stock market goes down. Just remember, you know, if, if I'm selling you know, a hundred shares of Apple and somebody selling a million shares or five million shares of Apple, they can move markets that way. My hundred shares of Apple is not going to move a market. Somebody dumping or buying a million or five million or 10 million, whatever shares of Apple that can do things to markets. Not saying they do that. I surely hope they wouldn't do something like that. But let's call it like it is. People want to make money, right? So if their intention is to make money, then who, you know, hey, maybe I'll dump my Apple, my five or 10 million shares up here, drop it on the way down, and then I'll, I'll take short positions on the way down. It's a stock market, guys. You can complain about it. You could be upset. You can say it's rigged. It's not. Because remember, if Warren Buffett or any of those people have money up here and they're doing stuff, they can't hide it from the charts it is here you can learn these charts and if you master these charts the future is is endless for you this is a skill set you can have for the rest of your life so this is on a long-term trend is this making sense so far guys in the trade room for long-term trends again there's so many different things you can do and then you can do them more you know again so that's on the way up Right, so we can clear the drawings. Now I can say, let's just go looking. Now this is where you could say, ah, it's a little bit difficult on a monthly chart. Cool, let's take a step back and go weekly. Now it's a little bit easier, or maybe even daily, right? So now I can go into a daily, and now I can find more peaks and valleys, right? So let's just take a look at it now, right? So let's connect some valleys. Here's a valley. You guys see this? Right down. Boom. See how I'm connecting these valleys, these support levels? 
You guys see, let's do. Right here, you see, price is going up. It's in this channel. You guys see the channel? See how it's just nicely, see how, see that, that channel? Now, if I go to a weekly, let's see where it looks on the weekly. You see kind of how it like kind of, it's part of in that channel on the weekly. And then monthly, it's you know probably not gonna look as good. It's gonna look a little bit weird or wonky on a monthly. But this is where you just zoom the time frame down to get a better look at it. So this is in a, ah, oh, come on. So as price is falling, it's in the down channel. That's also a falling wedge pattern. What does that mean? Well, look, you guys see falling wedge and that candlesticks course. Again, take our candlesticks courses, guys. I showed you our website, bullishbears.com. You can get these wallpapers here. What happens as price starts to break out, that's where you'd look to maybe get an entry, right? Go back over here. What is price doing? Boom, it breaks out of the, right, the falling wedge. It's not hocus pocus, guys. Once you understand and see this stuff, it's mitigating or managing your risk, right? Manage your risk when trading. This stuff works, right? So now that's the falling channel. Now, guess what? It breaks out. So now you can see as price is going out over here, connect this level out to these levels, right? Connect this valley with these valleys. And that line goes out to the future. And now, guess what? Connect this peak right over in here. You can do, let's do this. Kind of like that, or you can even, so you can, this is where you gotta be careful guys, right? You don't wanna see, oh, okay, cool, it's gonna keep going up. Or you could even kind of come in over in here and it could, you know, so this is where you gotta be careful guys. You have to look at candlesticks as well because you can think and think you see something and it could be something else or you could miss something else, right? So look, we're in an up channel, right? So we're in a channel this candlestick is a warning, right? So this is a warning and it's at a pivotal level. If you want the market to be bullish, you wanna see it go out like this and continue up. But it could come back down, right? It could come back down, it can go up. This is a channel, right? So if we're looking at this, we wanna see it continue up in this channel. If it breaks out of this channel and goes bullish, fantastic. We'd love to see a beautiful V bottom go up like this. If it starts to fail over here, then you might have a falling wedge if it falls out of this wedge. We gotta watch the patterns, right? And as you guys can see back over here, this is where we can zoom in and see right over here. I can connect some valleys here. I can connect some peaks down here. And if I remove, actually let's just remove I want to not make it too confusing for you. <clears throat> you guys see that that was a down channel. We'll now look at, let's do this. Let's remove these ones. Do you guys see what this is? If you're new, what is this? Basically, it is a bull flag or another falling wedge, whatever you want to call it, it's doing kind of the same thing. Bull flag, falling wedge, as it breaks out, that's where you would take an entry. What is it doing here? Right here, it broke out, right? You guys see, does this make sense? It's not, it's not hocus pocus, guys. These candlesticks are so important because that's where it brings all of the horizontal and vertical support and resistance together and drawing trends. So the trend is your friend. When the trend breaks, that's when you'd consider getting out. So as you can see, if you were short here, this might not be perfect as I do it, but if you were short and then it starts to reverse and go up, right? The trend down may be broken. When it's going to the upside like this, 
if price starts to fail this lower trend line, then it might be broken and it might be a bear flag. So now you guys see, uh-oh, is this a bear flag or is this a rising wedge that's gonna fail? Again, guys, who the heck knows what they're doing right now? This, this market's nuts. So you look at this, you'd be concerned, oh, this is gonna fall back down and then be careful. This might be a big bear flag and it fails. You know, this is a warning, like this is a huge bear flag, but you know, this is where we gotta see. We've gotten faked out a lot lately, you guys. They might, who the heck knows? The Fed might buy stuff and turn it into a V bottom and completely break this pattern. That's why we have to learn and know the patterns. So you guys see this, these channels. That's on a daily. Let's go to intraday, right? So if you're doing, you know, kind of day trading and stuff like that, you know, you can do, you know, kind of connect some of these peak levels, connect some of these valleys, right? You see, it's not perfect. Sometimes you miss it a little bit, but so now you can see here's a five minute intraday. It was a uh, rising, uh, kind of a rising wedge pattern. So what happened back over here and Tuesday affects today, right? So right here, what happened back on whatever this was, Friday of last week comes all the way out to pre-market here today. And you see what happens, guys? What did it do? Market goes up, hits resistance comes back down right so now i could go and now if i'm looking at open let me zoom in here and say you know this is now if you're starting to day trade and you're zooming in day trading you might say okay that's kind of some bigger you know like five day five minute kind of the bigger overall pattern now let's zoom in and see okay what's going on here maybe i'll just you know, connect over in here, right? So you can see some support, some support. So if you were in here, you start to see, uh-oh, is the trend breaking down over in here? Okay, well then if it starts to, okay, went up, hit resistance, now it's starting to fail that trend, right? Then you could always go and do this. Flip it down and say, you know, start looking in these areas right here. Kind of right here. So now it's like kind of goes up, comes back down right what did it do it breaks out so then you guys can just okay well that might be reversing so now let's go over in here draw my trend lines up in here you see how there's so many of these wedges and patterns guys right falling wedge falling wedge breakout rising wedge breakdown falling wedge breakout rising wedge breakdown you know let's go back over to Guys, if you're new, watch this video over and over again. This is the key to like, really, guys, I can't ex I can't tell you how important this stuff is. Then you can start, uh, and sometimes it gets a little bit wonky. And then you can see, okay, well, is it gonna extend out over in here, you know? And, you know, maybe you're kind of doing, this is where I don't wanna go too crazy. You know, you can see kind of another channel. And then what did it do? It goes and it breaks out of the channel. Then you could do, you know, kind of out in here, right? Kind of goes up into another channel. What's it do? It starts to fail this channel. Now, maybe you reset at that point. Now you could, I'm showing you guys for day trading. So for those that are day trading, price action, these trend lines, very, very important. And then you can kind of maybe as it, you know, just reset over in here. And then, you know, now it goes out, you know, out here, right? So, you know, as it goes up, comes back down, it's going back up again. What is it doing? It's squeezing. Look at right here. And then boom, this shooting star candle that we remember that one on the monthly. Here you go. Here's one intraday right there, right at angular resistance. And then what did it do? It broke the trend, right? So now what did it do there? Now we can just reset, take your lines. And now as it's starting to fall,
down channel, right? So the up channel, see the up channel was broken. Now you have a down channel. Goes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And then what happens over here? What did price do? What is that? Kind of a falling wedge-ish pattern or a falling pattern. What did price do? It breaks out. What did it do here? It retested. It broke out of resistance. It then becomes support. Then what did it do? It breaks out again. What do you do now from here? Right, do your channel again. What did price do? It breaks out, goes down, comes back up, comes down. And then obviously this is the end of the day. It gets pretty wonky. <clears throat> guys, how is this helping? Is this helping you guys? I can't stress to you guys enough how incredibly important this is. This is everything when it comes to trading, guys. Absolutely everything. So now let me show you. Now this is what looking at the SPY. So this is where, again, guys, if you're, that's a five-minute chart. I'm going to make this a longer video again because it's just I'd rather give you guys the content. That's a five-minute chart. Go to a one-minute chart, right? If you're a one-minute day trader, scalper, you know, as price is kind of just kind of just find, find these patterns, right? Channel. Down channel. Up channel. Kind of broke down a little bit. You can even say right here. That was probably better, right? You know, so again, sometimes you might have a couple, right? A couple trend lines right here. And then look right here. Here's a falling. Right? Flag breaks out, goes up. <laughs> I'm confusing myself here now because I have too many drawings on my chart. And you can see up here, right? Channel. Down channel. What did it do? Breaks out of the channel connect these levels here, goes out to the future, you know, look right here, kind of goes in, look, it fell right here, went back up again. Now you may then might extend it out over here. And then it turns into megaphones, falling wedges, all those patterns, you know. So that's where when you get in, you know, maybe you just look at, let's just say if you were, you know, so right here, you'd look at, if you're day trading, as it breaks out, you know, if you missed buying support in this reversal down here, maybe you'd wait for a retest as it breaking out of the falling wedge. And then you could, uh, you know, right here, if you were in this trade right here, at if you missed it down here and right here, now you're in over here and you can say, okay, as this thing's breaking that trend line, I'm out, you know? And if you scalped as it's coming out, you know, over in here, let's see, 278.34, Maybe you're out over here, 278, you know, 90. You know, if you're doing futures, if you're doing contracts, you're right. You know, again, this is scalping, guys. This is, you see how that makes sense? And then as it breaks and that's falling down, then you'd reset. And then you also still have those five minute intraday. <clears throat> you're still having the bigger trend lines on there. Creed was talking about it earlier today. So you still have to be aware of them. But if you're scalping these plays, it's just fine, right? Finding these. Right? Here's a bull flag breakout. You see the patterns? Maybe you'll take your profits there, or you can say, oh, this trend line's back over in here. Oh, look, it, it held the trend line right here. So maybe maybe you decided to stay in on this one. And then it maybe you're out over here as it's breaking over in here. And then you'll see sometimes it just gets very choppy. You know what I mean? Sometimes it just, again, not sometimes, all the time. It happens all the time. You're not always going to get these great flags up, you know, these great trend lines up or trend lines down, you know. You're not always going to get clear like that. You'll get this stuff, especially right here. And look, guys, what is it? You know, it's kind of going into lunchtime and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So that's where you're trading against algos and computers and stuff like that. But then when you kind of reset, bring it back together right here. Now look at that. You guys see that? That's a megaphone pattern kind of falling down. Price goes down, goes up, comes back down here. Now you connect these peaks here. You know, now it comes down right over in here. So now and you see it was very choppy here this afternoon. And then, you know, it's, it, you know, 
forget t today is a weird day and going into friday tomorrow and good friday and all that stuff but you'll see the megaphone pattern guys it goes up comes back down right here it's resistance resistance over here support over here if it fails the megaphone up here at some point if if today was still going you might look at some support potentially down in these areas if it fails it might want to come back down and retest so that's angular support and resistance All right, let's take a look at a couple penny stocks just because I want to give you, this is really nice for those that like large caps. This is SPY. SPY, you can do the same thing with Apple. You can do the same thing with Facebook and Netflix and Google, the large cap stocks. With uh, penny stocks, obviously a lot more volatile, but the, the same thing still applies. You know, So if you look at AGS, here's a one minute chart. Obviously, you need volume and liquidity. You can see, guys, you know, just notice it's a lot more at open. You'll see, like, gets crazy, right? You know? But, you know, here's a perfect example. Let's say, let's say you caught this one. You can see pre market highs were kind of consolidating right over in here. There wasn't much action. Let's say you caught this one at the break of pre market high. This is one minute candles. You can connect the base of this candle. This is where you have to be super quick day trading, guys, right? Very, very quick. If you were lucky and you caught this one, when it starts breaking the trend up in this area right here, that high wave candle, you'd get out. Now, again, look at way out there, the big wick way up here. So that's a warning sign in and of itself. But let's say you missed that move because, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people will. So let's say you let this thing break out and now like kind of form kind of a channel or form, you know, it's not going to be great. This is where you guys see lots of crazy wicks and stuff. This is where you got to kind of ad lib a little bit or see, look for these candles and you can see, ah, right here. Here was your hidden gem right there, right here. And you can see now I'm connecting this base in these two bases. Here's a falling wedge pattern. And you can see here was a hammerish kind of candle right in here. Small candles. You risk off of small candles, guys. You buy flags or the small little candles that before they break out, you don't buy flagpoles. This right here is the epitome of what the bullish bearish community does not do. If you are a member of our community, we do not do this. And this means we do not pump stocks to our community members. We don't take positions, pump them up to you and claim like we're heroes because we made profits. It's very easy to pump stocks, buy small caps, sell them up to you here and you know what we're doing is we're selling to potentially our members, right? <laughs> so if we're, you know, we're teaching, we teach low float stocks, we teach how to trade this stuff, but we're not taking large positions on our own and pumping them up to our members and selling the stocks to them up here. That's what, that's the game, guys. You know what I mean? That's the game in the industry. We teach you how to trade this, but this right here is not a guru buying. A guru, the ones that you see all over Instagram that are, you know, whatever, they're promoting their fancy lifestyle, they ain't, they're not buying up here. This is where their, their chat room members are buying, right here or right here. So great, they buy their 10,000 shares, they dump them out here to their members and their members are buying here and then they're crying back down here because they're losing money and guess where the guru buys? Right here, guys. If, they, if the guru didn't get in here, they bought in right over here. Now, if you followed a guru here, you would have been pretty good for a little bit. But right here, this small little hammer candlestick. And then, as you can see, here's some warning signs. And then, boom, this starts breaking that trend line. Get the heck out, right? You can do kind of like this. It's kind of a, <clears throat> you know, this is where it's not the greatest, but it's kind of a megaphone pattern, right? So you see it's kind of riding up, consolidates back down. It gets risky. These are very risky candles. Again, you have to understand candlesticks. 
but officially it's starting to break the trend here. But you guys see, if you don't, you're not quick with these, these will dump very quickly. That's why we consider, tell people, consider taking your profits, especially with penny stocks, when you start seeing this, not necessarily when it's too late in doing that. So you can see there's your kind of channels there. Let's see um, how it looks the rest of the day. You know, this is where you can do the five minute. So now you can go back five minute. So you see how I can redo it throughout the day? You know, it starts to change. So towards the end of the day, I can change it to over here. In the beginning of the day, it'd be out here. Then it would extend out to here. It extends out to here or maybe even out to here, right? And then my peaks go out to these peaks, right? So it's kind of these rising channels. But then depending on the time frame where it's at, I can come back down and I can go here, right? So it goes up, hits resistance, comes back down. What does it do? It breaks out again, right? All these levels are so important. Reserve, you know, let's remove this drawing, come back down over in here. Boom, I can do this base right here. Another one down in here, kind of another falling wedge. Boom, it breaks out. What do I do? Connect my trend lines right out here. And obviously you gotta be careful holding small cap stocks into the clothes and stuff. Is this making sense, guys? I can do one more. You want me to do one more? Is this too much or repetition? I try to do repetition is the key. I'm gonna do one more anyway, whether you say yes or no. <laughs> A-I-N-V. All right, so right here, opening bell. I mean, this is crazy, right? So again, you just draw your trend lines. Don't panic, kind of your trend line up, starts to break. Let's say you missed all of this, right? You're like, ah, I didn't get a part of that. Okay, so let the pattern play out. Now look, put it back down. What is this pattern, guys? That's a falling wedge or a bull flag, whatever you want to call it. What did it do? Went up, came back down, boom, right here. Small little hammer candle. What did it do? Just go back to where we show you in our wallpapers. Here's where you would take your entry. Stop, let's say, below here. Back over in here. Boom, it breaks out. Now you can see a couple candles here. Connect the trend line, right? So now you can just go right here. You guys see falling wedge. Now it's kind of going to a rising channel right here, a megaphone. Obviously, this would be a warning to get the heck out of here. But if let's say you missed it, once it's over here, get out. You know, get out on this candle definitely over here. Take your profits out here. Again, I can't tell you when to take profit. Me personally, I don't like to give back. I, I just, I, I'd rather sell too soon. And, you know, I just, I personally, especially with low floats, you see that stock, I'm getting the heck out out here. I'm not waiting for him to fall out here. <clears throat> and then, then you'll see so many a times and it just kind of consolidates right over here. So then I can kind of just, you know, I can take my drawing tool and I can kind of like, I can connect these peaks out here. I can now take, you know, some support out here, right here. I can keep extending it and keep extending it out over here and keep going and going. And then I could also do that, right? Or I can go out to here, right? So you guys see? You know, that's why it's just play around with this stuff, right? Connect as many peaks and valleys as you can. And this is the bigger overall channels. And then you can just kind of look and see inside of it. Okay, let's go and let's find more of them. Okay, maybe that's a pennant. Maybe that's going to look to break out. Again, that's end of day, so I wouldn't really pay attention to that. You know, falling channel, boom, right down here. What do you have right here? A small little hammer that turned into a morning star pattern took off. 
Now what you could do right here is if you wanted is just do again, connect your trend lines kind of out like this. You know, starts to give you a warning, starts to break the trend, get out. And as you guys can see, guys, there is not a, uh, there is no uh, moving average lines on here. But now I can just go and we can do a, let's do right here. Um, what was that? A I N V. And then voila, guys. So now you can see some moving average lines if you want to see once you know this stuff. You can go off trend lines or many a times, again, that 9 EMA, guys. That's why we like that 9 EMA for momentum is, uh, you know, it's just good. You can see now, you can see my chart gets a lot more. There's a lot more going on on this. You see how it's a lot cleaner when I was just looking at candlesticks. That's why I might have this up on uh, another chart, you know, like other like I, I like I showed you over here. <clears throat> I'll look at different time frames, maybe over in here, you know, just to kind of get a gauge on it. But at least you know when I'm trading, you know, depending on what your style is, it's um, you know, so you can kind of just zoom out. And just going back to that ride the nine, we'll bring it back to that ride the nine that I talked to you guys about, that video that I did, I showed you guys on our YouTube. Now you can just kind of, you can do trend lines or you can look at this. <laughs> Whew. This is where you can see guys, it gets crazy uh, intraday. But you know what I mean? See right here, it's gonna be much harder. I would not risk much. Ride the nine, I'm taking my profits. I, I don't like to deal with this on, on these small cap stocks. But technically, if you had the gut, you know, if you got an early entry, you know, let's say you were back over here, you got in at opening bell. You know, if you got in at opening bell, let's say you got lucky, you got a good position or you got at the break of this one minute candle at 784. Technically, there's not a close until, you know, let's say right over here below the nine. If you get the early entry, you might be able to stick around a little bit longer. If we go over here. We talked about the crossover starting to happen. Where was it? Right over kind of in here. If you got in over here at say 865, you're out at, you know, 881. But remember, you're giving up profits along the way. So the ride the nine works, right? You know, over here, you know, look at this guys, it's riding the nine. You know, if you got one of these entries all in here, you know, let's say 886, you're out at, 911. I just again guys, with ride the 9 with small cap stocks, I I'm very hesitant to say, "Oh, just ride it out" because this is where it's stuff like this you'll get nailed with. It can happen on large cap stocks as well. That's where you have to mitigate your risk and manage your risk and be uh it's very important. All right, guys. Whoosh. I think I covered everything. I wanted to do horizontal and angular support and resistance and trend lines on multiple time frames, showing you multiple large cap and small caps. Questions that you guys have, does this make sense? I know it is a lot of information. You guys have any questions in the trade room, guys? 100%, it works. All right, let me see. I also think I, uh, I don't know if I missed other people's comments. Those backgrounds, where do you find them? Perfect, let me get them for you and I'll show you. Oh, okay, cool, I see some comments. Dealing with extensions. Miguel, I'll get to you guys in a second. All right. So, you can find them by going to our website. So these backgrounds right over here that Miguel or that uh, Trevor was asking, we have cust three custom made backgrounds. We have the bullish ones, we have bearish ones, and we also have uh, reversals, right? So if for you guys in the trade room, all you guys need to do 
is go to right under lot because you're logged in already trevor so if you're a member of ours already or even a free member even free members will get it as well just at least a login free or paid that has a login you would just log in up here come right over here and either one of these candlesticks courses right here you'll see a tab behind there that says ebook and when you get in there that's where you'll get our ebook and our three wallpaper backgrounds so for paid members or free if you don't want to pay and join yet and you want to try us out for free just log in you just take our free courses right here log in right here actually if you log if you uh, sign up for free right here you actually get a welcome email with our ebook and the wallpapers but for you Trevor just go under courses right under both either one of these courses and click on ebook and you'll be able to download them for Twitter people actually we did it on Twitter uh, we actually have it pinned unless Dan changed it. Perfect. We actually have a pin on our Twitter right now for the wallpapers that's already up there. Let me see here. I actually just had, yes, Trader Dre. Dealing with extensions and holding through pullbacks is your struggle. How did this help you with uh, the trend lines? Does it help give you a better visual? Candlesticks, guys, you still, this is where I want to bring it to you guys. Even though uh, horizontal and vertical support and resistance, it only happens through candlesticks, right? We're connecting the peaks and the valleys through candlesticks, right? The patterns. So you have to understand and know candlesticks first. And that's why you, you know, take our, guys, I'm not, I'm not going to lie and sugarcoat it. It takes a long time. You know what I mean? I wish I could tell you that it was just, Oh, simple. You're going to pick up candlesticks like it's nothing. No, it's going to take, you're going to have to look at at least hundreds of charts, if not thousands. You know, if you're new to this, it might take you three to six months, depending on how, how much your time you're willing to put into it. Stare at these charts every day. Look and find these patterns. You know, hunt, have a game. You know, I actually was thinking about doing <laughs> a game, find the pattern, right? Um, but once you learn the stuff, it starts to become like like in your subconscious and you'll be outside and you'll be like, oh, that, that mountain is a double top pattern. Oh, that's a head and shoulders. Oh, that's a cup and handle. You start seeing these patterns in your sleep. And that's where it gets really fun, guys. That's where it's just, it's awesome. Because this is where it brings it back, guys. If you learn this stuff, I mean, it brings you back to my rant again at the beginning. I would bet money that many of you, I'll tell you what, I'll guarantee, I, I bet money on this. <clears throat> if any of you guys have a 401k through a major broker and not a personal financial advisor, I bet you most or many don't even have a clue if you call up a major broker and says hey i got my 401k with you can you explain this chart to me i would bet money that most of them don't know it they don't know it because there's there's one of two scenarios right let's take a look right here if you are my client which we're not we don't do clients like that if i managed your 401k and I told you how much they cared about you and yada, yada, that whole game, right? I'm not saying it's a game. I think a lot, they're really good. But a lot of the big companies, yeah. So, hey, we value you, Mr. or Mrs. Customer. We value your business. Hey, we blah, 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 blah. If you valued me that much, and I fall into the demographic. See, I'm 41 years old. I fall into the demographic of risky. I would be in the most aggressive funds with a major broker. They would plan me out. Hey, what do you want for your retirement? A million or two million, whatever it is. Okay, cool. They factor in however many recessions or whatever they put in their algorithms. But meanwhile, if you value my business so much, and there's many companies, guys, through employers, right? You'll pay. There's a thing that I had in, in my previous employer called Financial Engines with a previous company. 
that would proactively manage your account. Well, they shift and move funds. I would bet money they didn't put me in. Would they put me in cash? Hey, markets at all times. Can we take a breather? Put me on cash for a, just a certain period of time. Wait a second. Why did you let me take 20 or 30% hit? You manage my, my money. You care about me. I'm a value client. Why would you let that happen to me? I would never in a million years ever, ever tell a bullish bears member ever to buy a stock. I don't care what the stock is. I don't care if it's Apple or I don't care if it's Dries. I would never in a million years tell any member to buy any stock right here. Ever, never, ever. But meanwhile, there are millions probably of people in America and around the world right now that just took a 20, 30% hit in their retirement. And meanwhile, if you cared about me as a customer, you would never allow me ever to take that hit ever if you knew what the heck you're doing so that leads me to believe one of two things you either don't know what you're doing many of these people that manage money right that's bad enough okay we make mistakes hey you know what you work for a company you got a job they pay your salary you have a bunch of clients whenever somebody phones in okay cool you make the changes you don't know i'm not going to fault you for it that's your job if you do that for a career and you don't know that's an even bigger problem you know that's different you know now you're making more money you're on your own you don't do it that's a problem or do they know do many people know this and still allow it to happen so you either don't know it or you do and you still allow it to happen and i would guarantee you there are a lot of people that make money because they make money, many financial advisors, by having you invested in certain funds at certain times. And then when the market does this, they tell you, don't worry, it's going back up again. But guess what happens? 2000, 2008 happens. One time, two times, three times is the charm. If you didn't, if you're a financial advisor back in 2008 and you didn't know stock charts and you allowed it to happen again to your client, shame on you. Shame on you. I'm sorry, guys. That's my rant. <laughs> I just, this is it, guys. I mean, this is it. If you learn this stuff, if you learn it, I am so passionate about trying to teach you guys this. It means everything. It's not foolproof. But I just showed you guys, I showed you tangible proof, so many different ways, so many things of a warning just to allow you to see this stuff. And that's why I kind of wrap it up and just say, take this to your financial advisor. Ask them to explain this chart. Ask them to pull up the chart of a spy and say, can you explain this to me, please? If you can't, if they can't, find a new advisor, fire your advisor or become your own advisor. You know, learn this stuff, take some time, learn these patterns, and then you can manage your risk along the way. I just taught you the skill set in this, between this and within our courses. This, this video and the one I did yesterday is gold. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but I'm tooting my own horn here. I'm trying to give it to you guys. This is so important. I made videos several months for you guys back in December. I warned, I warned our people. I warned you guys and it breaks my heart because I warned people here, and I'll guarantee you there's some people that either didn't listen or they missed the videos. I warned it back here, right before that red candle. And I hope, I hope it goes back up here again. I hope at some day, at some day I'm sure, of course, someday it will. But what does that mean? Is this gonna be five years, six years, two years, two days? We'll see, but just remember, this is the key right up here and actually here's another little secret before we add it up end it this is also a key right there that candle wick because it can also turn into a head and shoulders pattern so be aware and it can still come down here like don't you know this could be a, a an, an implied left shoulder ahead and then you get faked out right here so actually i want to be very you know, clear here doesn't mean it's just going to go right back up here, but this zone's right up in here. 
If these start to fail, if it fails up here, it's a double top. If it starts to fail here or here, it's a head and shoulders failure. If you don't know what I'm talking about, guys, take our courses, download our ebook, put our wallpapers up and stare at this over and over and over. Have this on your background. <laughs> yes, it promotes Polish bears. Uh, we appreciate that. But at the same time, get this stuff in your subconscious. Let it go over and over and over and over have it, you know, interchange it once a week or once a month. Change them out over and over and over until this stuff becomes second nature to you. All right, let me see what you guys got here. Do those come in white backgrounds going to kill the ink cartridge? <laughs> yes. You know what? Son of a gun. Everyone, Trevor. Ah, oh, man, I got to upload them. I do have them. I do have them. Uh, now I should probably just, I'm going to do that for you. Let me see. Where's my, uh, where the heck did my folders go? Oh, here we go. I'll show them to you. Now you're going to want them and I'm going to have to put them in there for you right now. Let me just open it up. See if these what or what Creed made them, which was really good. Let's see. There you go. You like those ones? <laughs> All right, guys, I'll upload them. I'll put them into the... Uh... I didn't like it as much because we couldn't figure out... It had a little bit... I didn't like the breaking up of the, the lettering. I try to be artistic and have things, so I don't like how it just... To be honest with you, I don't like the ink on it, but... Screw it. I guess I don't care. I'll just put them up there. They don't look as pretty, but you don't care. I wonder if I could... Uh... Oh, you know what I'll do? Hold on. Here's what I'll do for you. Let me do this. I'll do this for you. I'm going to... Because you're in the chat room and you've made it and you stuck with my rants, here's what I will do for you. I will upload them right now to the trade room for you. So they'll be bullish. And anybody else watching right now, I'm going to end the stream. Hopefully this all helped you, Trevor. I'm going to put this, upload this for you guys right now. So hopefully this helped you guys, and I'll see you all later. Enjoy.